So this next section has to do with something we call accuracy, precision, and also something uh, we call significant figures. And again, having taken 3A or a class before this, you're probably familiar with those ideas a little bit. So I thought I would review those with you and then sort of give you some examples that you could sort of uh, work from to do your homework. Um, so you make a measurement, right? Let's say you put something on a balance. You'll get a number, uh, for example, like 435. But without the unit, that's meaningless. So is that 30, 435 grams or 435 pounds or, or what kind of thing is it? So we, we have a quantity, which is the number, right? And then we have a unit. And then we have uncertainty. So if you take... Um, Let's say you go to the grocery store. You know how you have the uh, old-fashioned pan balances that have a dial in it, right? And you put food in there, and you want to say, well, I need three pounds of fruit, right? Now, usually we're not that picky, but when you put it in there and you look at it, you know how the needle is like part way between two different numbers? And so you have to try to guess, like, what does that number mean? So three pounds might be easy to see because of one, two, and three, but what if you needed two and a half pounds, right? Then you'd have to sort of guess where the middle is. So we often refer to that as noise in the measurement or uncertainty in the measurement. We try to read it and get the right number, but we're kind of guessing a little bit. And so significant figures will help us deal with that uncertainty. So science in general is empirical. Uh, chemistry, we say, is empirical science. Uh, there are also some theoretical sciences that are not based on observation. But an observation would be something uh, like a measurement. Okay. Um, so accuracy is really what we refer to when a number is close to what the actual number is. So the drawback to accuracy, right, this is closeness to the actual, the drawback to accuracy is that you may not know the actual number and so you have to make a measurement and hope that it's accurate but there's also another term and these two terms get mixed up in our language okay it's called precision and in general what's assumed in science is if your numbers are precise then there's a good chance if you did everything right that the result is accurate so what is precision by the way, that's not necessarily true, okay? Um, but precision is how close the measured values are to each other. So we refer to that often as the range of the values. And there's a number of ways to characterize the range. And I'm just going to show you a couple in a, in a slide or so. But precision is how close the numbers are to each other. And so what does closeness mean? It In terms of numbers, right, like... 3.3 and 3.1 or 3.3 and 3.2 these numbers are closer to each other that's what we refer to it by closeness closer to each other because they're more similar to each other now how does that play out in a measurement right so let's say you have two students and you give them the same piece of string and they take the same piece of string and they measure it uh, four times right as the teacher in this case let's say we know that that's the correct answer but we're testing their measurement skills what happens is student one so we'll call this experiment one and student two make four measurements and typically those measurements should not be the same and usually they're not always exactly the same value even though you're measuring the same thing so how do we uh, quantify accuracy and precision, right? So I'm going to show you on the next page. I already wrote a lot of this out. One way to, to do accuracy is compare it to the average. And so, you know, when you do an average, I just took the 19.3, the 20.1, the 19.4, and 19.2. And I added all those together, and that actually comes out to 78.0. Sorry, a little sloppy there. And there are four values, so you take the total, right, the sum, and divide it by the number of values you have, and this is your average right here. So this is my average. And then you can do the same thing with student two's data. Student two has a value of 19.5, etc. right, you can see the values there. And so I just took all those numbers and I added them together, and I got 77.2 as the total or the sum, right? So this is the sum that number of those numbers that 
I'm calculating the average from. Then divide by 4, and that gives me my average. So I ended up with 19.3. Now, as the teacher in this instance, right, we know the answer is 19.2. So actual is 19.2. Now, whose number is more accurate, right? Well, if you look at the student results, you'll notice that 19.3 is closer than 19.2 than 19.5 is. So we can already say that this one is more accurate. Now, we can quantify that as a percent, right? As a percent of the actual. And the way that that's done is this going to be called the percent error. So it makes it sound bad. Like we know it's, it looks like a pretty good average, right? But we're going to calculate how much error there is in that measurement. And then the way we do that, actually, is the measured minus the true value divided by the true value times 100 percent so this is the true value the actual value so let's go ahead and do that calculation i'm going to whip out my handy dandy calculator over here this one which i actually like i keep telling you guys i don't really like it but i don't know if a better one for the computer that you can actually see me do the calculations on so that's going to be uh, oh sorry i didn't write it out that's going to be um, the measured value, the average, 19.5 minus 19.2. So this is for experiment one, divided by 19.2 uh, times 100%. So let's pull up the calculator again. <coughs> so 19.5 minus 19.2. I'll hit equals, and then I'll go divided by 19.2 times 100 to get my percent. And that becomes... Uh, one point, we'll call it one point six percent. Okay, so let's look at the other one. I didn't really leave myself enough space here, did I? But let's go ahead and try to do that. We'll do the other one at the top. So the percent error for this is for trial uh, trial one or experiment one. For experiment two, we can do the same thing. I can do, let's see, what is it? It's 19.3, um, so this is the measured value, all right? Minus 19.2, divided by 19.2 again. Again, you divide by the known value times 100%. And that will come out to be, we'll pull up the calculator real quick. I'm not sure what my computer is doing, but it's like on overdrive and getting super hot. So I may have to stop here for a little bit. Hopefully I don't get too uh, disconnected. So let's see, here we go. Um, yeah, 19.3 minus... 19.2, which I should have probably just written 0.1, divided by 19.2, and then times 100, 0.52%. So when you're looking at the error in those values, like the um, the accuracy error, right? Then what we find is 
again, this value is smaller, right? Because the value that was measured is actually closer to the known or accepted value or the true value, okay? Okay, so that's, that's one aspect, the accuracy, how close it is to the actual value. The other uh, uh, value, other idea is called the precision, and we'll do that on the next slide. So another aspect that we deal with is known as precision. And so I've just recopied the numbers here from the original uh, data. Uh, so this is experiment one or student one. And this is uh, experiment two, All right? And what we find is that that if you want to know what the precision is, is that you need to see how close the numbers are together. And in measuring the closeness of the numbers, that gives you an idea how precise they are, is how how repeatable they are. So precision is really telling us how well could you repeat this measurement, get a similar number if you did it again. Okay, so in this case, the simplest way and probably the first way people learn to deal with this is called looking at the range of the numbers. And the range is really what it sounds like. You take the high number and the low number. So in this case, I'm looking through the list. Now, oftentimes people will sort the list from low to high, okay, or high to low, either way, and then look to see which one is the first number and the last number. So if I were to do that, right, 19.2 is the lowest number and 20.1 is the highest number and those would be on opposite ends and the range is usually calculated as an absolute value and so in this case 20.1 minus 19.2 gives me a range of 0.9 centimeters now if i did that with experiment two what would happen is is i would look at these numbers and i would look for the lowest and it looks like this is my lowest and then if i look for the highest it looks like this is my highest one and so 19.5 minus 19.0 that gives me a range of 0.5 now, I'm not going to cover, so, so anyways, which one of these two sets is more precise, right? The more precise value set of numbers is actually experiment two, even though experiment one uh, appears to be more accurate, okay? So those are that's the difference. Experiment two, it looks like if that person made the measurement again, they would get a result that is similar to the original measurements, right? On the other hand, Accuracy is how closely when you do your measurements are you getting to the actual number. And really that's the gold standard. That's what we want to do. But oftentimes we don't know what the actual number is. The first time, like I was talking about earlier, we, we determined the number of uh, molecules inside a vesicle. That's what we did. We were able to count them basically. Um, then what happened was... Um, um, we made lots and lots of measurements and so we had an idea about the range of the sizes but we really didn't know how accurate that number was and so we had to do actually a, a large literature search actually my friend did it <laughs> largely because it was his project he did the large literature search and try to figure out well what do we actually know about how much is each in each vesicle and so that's where um, we were able to look at our data and say it's consistent with the other data, and then sort of point out why you know the way we were doing is maybe better or worse for, the, for that matter. Okay, now I'm not going to talk about it here. This is actually a lab topic. But there's also something called the standard deviation. And this is what most scientists use for sets of data like this. And um, if you look at the top set of numbers, okay, what we get is a standard deviation. It's experiment one. We get a standard deviation of 0.41. And the symbol that's usually given to it is S or S, right, like that. And then for the second set of numbers, uh, the standards for experiment two, the standard deviation or sigma is uh, 0 0.22. Okay, again, it agrees with the range. And you and in that uh, the standard deviation for the second set of numbers is smaller than the set of standard deviation for the first set of numbers. The interesting thing about the standard deviation is statistically what it means. Okay, so I got my, I've got my average. Let's go back for a second. For, let's look at uh, experiment two's average. Uh, the average was 19.3, right? So the average is 19.3. If I subtract 0 0.22 from that, 
I'm going to get, uh, let's see, uh, 19 point um, one one, and if I add it to there, 19.3 plus 0, oh sorry, 0 0.22, then I'll end up with 19.52, uh, like that. So in terms of like number lines, right, so if I had a number line, and this is 19.3, uh, and then I have these two values I just calculated. I had 19.11 and I had 19.52, all right? What, what the standard deviation is telling me, mathematically, what it does, is it turns out about 68% of the values that you measure based on that standard deviation should fall within that range. If you do two standard deviations, it turns out 95% of the values you measure using the same technique should fall in that range. So then the thing is, is if, if a number falls outside of that range, we have a good guess that it belongs to a different set of data. For example, the set of data that has errors in it or maybe from a different population of measurements. Like if it's not strings we're talking about, but we're talking about uh, behavior, uh, like traits of, let's say, an animal's jawline. Uh, if you take measurements and calculate averages and standard deviations, you can tell whether or not that that animal's jawline structure fits in with that particular species that you're studying, or maybe that it's something different, things like that. Okay, so that's the idea of precision. Again, in lab, we'll talk about standard deviation a little bit more. But uh, for lecture for now, we're just basically looking at the closeness of numbers, and that's the precision. And then the closeness to the actual value, if you have it, right, that's the accuracy.